Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the IBF Pocket Book Talk session. IBF is the International Forum under the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, CLT, established to address the needs of corporate and individual members in areas concerning business networking, business matching, and trade assistance. IBF offers space for CLT members to work together, explore, and participate beyond their traditional market. My name is Rosita Faisal, Conference Manager at Transport Events, and this week, I'll be interviewing another corporate member of CLT Malaysia. Our guest for this week is Dr. Nazri Yahya, the principal of JP Skills Center, Johor Port Berhad. He is Malaysia's approved HRDF trainer since 2004 and collectively has trained more than 7,000 officers around the globe. Nazri is blessed with experiences in multiple industries, including from the banking, fund management, forwarding, aircraft, trucking, and the port industry. He too has unique experience working as an expatriate in the United States, Japan, Hong Kong, and Vietnam. Nazri holds a PhD from Finland's University of Australia. With all the experience gained, Nazri has been appointed as advisors to several universities in Malaysia and overseas. Professionally, he has also been appointed as expert panels of Mark Plus, which is the leading consultancy company in Indonesia. And Malaysia Mosti, Minister of Science and Technology Innovation, JPK National Occupational Skills Standard and OSS, and Malaysia Board of Technologies and Board. Dr. Nazri, how are you doing? Rosita, thank you very much for this kind of tradition. I'm I'm well, thank you very much. Right. Um, Dr. Nazri, can you explain more of what you are doing right now and um, yeah, what you've been up to during the pandemic, after the pandemic, and and what we need to know about you as a CLT member? Oh, that's a million dollar question. It can be solved over a cup of coffee. So we'll <laughs> settle it after this. Okay, anyway, uh, anyway, uh, again, thank you very much, Rajita, for the kind words and uh, to uh, IBF Malaysia and CILT for inviting me for this uh, Get to Know Forum. Uh, I'm truly on that. Right? Um, if you know me as a person, I carry many hats, but uh, that's for sure. Uh, but in my personal capacity, now I am the principal of the PSK Center. Um, you heard a lot of things about the PSK Center just now, but uh, we, we are actually the world's first port Kaizen Sensei. And uh, we also won the, uh, the world's port, uh, port and terminal training center for uh, in 2021. So that, eh? And uh, on the top of that, the eh, PSK Center also is the first port in the world that offers uh, a professional master's in port management. This is our collaboration with UTM, University of Technology Malaysia. Okay. okay. Um, at JPSC, uh, I think what I do, I just share first what JPSC do, uh, JPSC Center or JPSC does. Then I'll tell a little bit about uh, my personal thing. Okay. At, at JPSC, uh, we carry many functions. Uh, uh, a part of it is, uh, we assist government officers. For instance, uh, we, we organize programs like a program Kebole Pasaran Berdia Johor, whereby we help to unemployed SPM leavers, unemployed graduates, and those affected by, uh, by the pandemics to be trained in another skill, especially in my area, right, in the port and logistics, uh, for them to be marketable. Because uh, I've seen, and I've been to many universities in the world, in, in Malaysia also, the most employable graduates are the one that studies logistics and supply chain. But it's up to the level. Uh. Sometimes they are, if you are uh, in, in Malay, in, uh, we call that the Ziki. Sometimes they got high, a good position. Sometimes they start from the bottom. But it doesn't matter. Because with the knowledge of logistics, you can always carry yourself up. Right? And for secondly, at JPSC, we also do consultancy. We, uh, there are many areas of consultancy that we, uh, we, 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 do, we do. Something like uh, number one that we have been uh, sharing just now as a port Kaizen uh, um, consultancy. We go to the ports and we do some Kaizen things, Kaizen or Lean uh, management for the ports. We also have uh, uh, the ISO uh, 
uh, consultancy, we do uh, cruise terminal um, uh, consultancy, and we also do fish terminals consultancy. Okay? And of course, you heard just now, uh, at JPSC, we do all kinds of trainings, uh, soft, 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 from soft skills to competency to certification levels. Uh, next, at JPSC, we have collaborations with universities. Uh, for instance, we, we work together with UTM. And just now you heard, we offer professional masters in port management. Uh, we also offer professional certificates in port and logistics. And uh, with UTHM, uh, University Tun Hussein on Malaysia, we, uh, they are TVET uh, universities. We take their fourth year students, uh, stay with us, and we, uh, we guide them with the trades in the, in the port industries. So they will get out from, from the complete uh, UTHM students, will complete their degree, Plus, they will have uh, SKM level two from JPSC uh, with the collaboration with JPK, Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran. Eh? And uh, since we talk about uh, JPK, Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran, uh, JPSC also we do uh, we guide uh, uh, participants, candidates, apprentices. Eh? The, the correct word is actually apprentice to have uh, SKM level one, Sijil Kemahiran Malaysia level one. That one basically to, to drive the prime, uh, prime movers or the terminal tractors. Sijil Kemahiran Malaysia level two, uh, which is the CRS, uh, container risk takers and the RTG rubber tire gantries, a very uh, unique port equipment. And SKM level three, uh, which is the key crane, uh, the one that's 60 centimeters uh, tall. And uh, I'm very proud to say at JPSC also, we have collaboration with ANTAT, United Nations Trade and Development Council. Uh, in ANTAT, we have, uh, they have uh, four types, four languages, uh, four main languages, uh, English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. I am, we are associated with the English speaking networks, whereby ANTAT uh, appoints uh, JPSC to deliver port trainings uh, around the globe. For example, eh, prior to COVID, uh, Antar has sent uh, JPSC, particularly myself, eh, to deliver uh, programs at African nations uh, like Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Tanzania, and uh, in Asia regions like in the Philippines, Indonesia. We cannot go to the South America. I, will, I always wanted to go to, to Brazil and uh, Brazil, Chile, and Argentina. I always wanted to have myself uh, with the Maracana Stadium behind me to take a <laughs> selfie with that. But I cannot do that. Because I cannot speak the Portuguese, because uh, this this country speaks the Spanish and Portuguese, so, so only English speaking, know. only English speaking countries that you are training. Yes, the yeah. untaught uh, English speaking networks. Eh? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, I think that that's about all on JPSC. Uh, we there's a lot of things for us to do, and uh, we done that efficiently. But again, uh, Rosita, just to share on my personal capacity, uh, because everyone wants to know how I get this energy. Eh? Um, I think the secret of, of everything is actually, uh, is I am a morning person. I wake up uh, every morning at 4 a.m. in the morning. Bulan puasa or non-bulan puasa, 4 a.m. is my time. Uh, um, and I'm also a believer of uh, power nap. I will always take a uh, eight to 10 minutes step uh, before 1 p.m. every day. Uh, oh. Even when I do trainings, I truly, truly uh, go somewhere and try to sleep if possible. But uh, kalau tak boleh, I go to the toilet and then I try to take my power nap <laughs> one minute in the toilet. <laughs> Something like that. Interesting. <laughs> oh, so that's, that works, yeah? The power nap. <laughs> the power nap. Uh, actually, the, uh, uh, actually, three things. Uh, wake up four o'clock in the morning, the power nap, and I sleep early. I sleep at around 11 a.m. Uh, 11 p.m. every day. Uh, don't I mean, because you know because I'm an active person. Uh, our mind, uh, we uh, for me, eh, I keep on talking every day. I keep on writing. I keep on thinking. Uh, by the time I reach 10, 30, 11 o'clock, it's already in the max. So that's why I have to, I mean, to rest. And I think that's the that's the best for everyone. I do not know, but it works well for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, you are also an award winner. Um, I see in your portfolio that 
You have won um, Malaysia Prime Minister Award in 2001, um, Industry Excellence Award in 2001 as well, International Excellence in Port and Terminal Training 2019, um, SPAD um, Award 2016, and also FedEx Director Award in 2002. Can you elaborate more? Um, I don't know what the Prime Minister Award is. <laughs> what uh, on these awards that you have won before because it's really in interesting uh okay i can only take credit only on what i mean full credit only on what fedex director what that one was given by uh, frederick w smith the own uh, the founder of fedex himself okay. I, I because uh he recognized my work uh, because i was a fund manager before you know, Arista, I just want to share you one story. Uh, this one, I, I need to share with everyone. I was, uh, you mentioned to everyone that I was a fund manager before. Mm -hmm. It was right. Uh, let me tell you a true story for everyone to, to, uh, to, to get the perspective. Eh? In 1993, I was, uh, 90, sorry, 94, um, I began, uh, started my career as, a, uh, as an analyst and I become a fund manager. In 1996-97, I was handpicked to run a fund in Hong Kong. The first Malay to, do, to be appointed to handpick to run a fund in Hong Kong. But uh, you know, in 1997-98, uh, what happened then? It was a year of, of a financial, uh, Asian financial crisis. Crisis, yeah. So I, I from a high flyer, uh, from uh, from a high flyer fund manager, uh, talking all with all the big bosses, the CEOs and CFOs, etc. So I was forced uh, in year 1999 to come back to Malaysia. And um, um, at that point of time, in 1999, the capital market was very dull. There's nothing that can be done. So I decided to make a career change. So I searched around uh, and I found FedEx. And the first day I uh, uh, joined FedEx, the MD of FedEx uh, told me, uh, Nazri, you come tomorrow to office, uh, you wear a t-shirt, jeans and sneakers. Wow, I tell you, Rizda, I got my head cracked. You know? I was the one all the way you see with me with, the, with jackets and ties and cufflinks uh, with, a, 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 I mean, a two inch uh, shoes, eh? something like that. Eh? So suddenly the CEO of FedEx asked me to ask to come to report to work wearing sneakers and jeans and t-shirts. <laughs> I, I, I got a shock of my life. Okay, uh, that's one. And then I, I came, right, yeah. I came. And then the first time I came, uh, the uh, the first assignment what I got was to check right with Eddie, uh, one of Felix Courier. Uh, boss, what is it? Uh, check right. And he actually wants me to go to uh, 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 to to go with Eddie inside his truck and deliver the cargo for three straight days. Rosita, I the mum the first day, you know. <laughs> but. You know, from someone who looks at Bloomberg, Reuters, and all the computers, tiba tiba I kena, uh, kena naik lori, I demam. <laughs> but that is the best lesson that I had. I, yeah. The first I, three yeah. days of trainings, there's a best lesson. And FedEx was the best uh, I mean, uh, company. And they gave me all the best trainings in the world. So that's why how I got the what do you call it the, uh, the FedEx director's award uh, directly from Frederick W. Smith, the only one in Malaysia at that point of time. Okay, there's a, uh, there's one one that I can take full credit. The rest of it, eh, uh, I have to share with Johor Port Pahat. For example, the uh, the Aki Award is Anugrah Kesenangan Industry. We won the category four uh, of hundred million ringgit and above company. Mm -hmm. So uh, a part of what I did is, uh, I mean, we, of course, you see JPSC's portfolio is quite big expansionary portfolio. So Aki Award is actually the the uh, they have four categories in Malaysia: uh, category one, two, three, four, uh, according to the sales. And category four is hundred million and above. And Prime Minister Award is actually uh, the highest accolades uh, a company can have in Malaysia. So we won that in actually uh, in 2021, you mentioned 2001, it's actually in 2021 last year. And uh, after we, after the uh, uh, JPSC and Johor Port Bahad uh, wins the award, 
we are not allowed to participate for the next three years. So we have to give chance to everyone. Awesome. So, yeah, I think that explains <laughs> the, the, the award thing. You are also this year the chairman of, for CLT Johor chapter. Um, do you yeah. have any plans or what are your plans and what are the activities you are you, um, doing this year for Johor members? Do you want to, yeah, talk about that? Okay. Uh, as a, um, I just took the chairmanship of, of CLT uh, in in um, in February 2022, not too long ago, just about two months plus now. Um, and uh, we we represent in CLT in Johor mem uh, represents about 500 plus members. So for 500 plus members, uh, they are hungry for activities. So uh, what we have planned, uh, we already assigned some bureaus to the organization. And uh, our, our main thing that we want to be for CLT Johor is we want to be the voice of logisticians in, in, in Johor. Because the voices of uh, logisticians in Johor is um, somehow it was um, swallowed by an unseen thing. I do not know. So there is no voice. So how, how uh, what the plan is? We went. We want to close the gaps, to have the lineups of meetings and discussions, and maybe some publications with the prominent figures and government agencies in Johor, such as uh, PAJ Pengangkutan Awam Johor, the Esko of Johor, the Pengangkut uh, Persatuan Taxi Taxi, the Persatuan Pemandu Pemandu E-Hailers, Persatuan uh, uh, Food Pandas for your drivers, uh, 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 food pandas, uh, riders, uh, all those things. So they need to be rep represented. And we, we hope to be their voice because not everything um, MOT can approve. Okay? And that's for the industry, uh, to be the voice of the industry. And we also need to cater for CLT Johor, we also need to cater the students because students are, are in Johor, you are, this is the only state that have uh, more than seven or eight universities and polytechnics that offers logistic courses. I kira kira easily one year, uh, a graduate of Johor uh, logistics easily around 1,500 people, students. So, so we have to address uh, this, uh, this pool of people. So we have plans um, to have, uh, to organize an eco-logistics challenge. The, the, uh, previously, I, 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 I organized an uh, um, eco-port challenge. Maybe this year I'm looking at uh, eco-airport challenge or maybe a project eco-project logistics challenge, something like that, right? So mm -hmm. it, will be, uh, it will be for the benefit for the students. And of course, uh, for students also, they need to be engaged with the industries. So we will organize some few webinars. And um, last but not least, uh, this year we, we plan for, uh, to organize the first Johor International Logistics Conference. Uh, it is somewhere in November, 2022. Okay. Um, not too many, about 100 participants uh, this year. But by, uh, our, our vision is by 2025, we would have minimum of 1,000 participants because mm -hmm. it would be the, the uh, logistics conference that everyone in Malaysia would come and attend. But mm -hmm. again, uh, because now we, with, the, 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 with the COVID, we are used for online thing. We can, they can, the, the participants can come from, from Ghana, from uh, USA, from Taiwan or whatever. So 100, Maybe physical hundred, but okay. we we open unlimited for un, uh, uh, for online uh, participation. Virtual participant, yeah. Virtual, okay. uh, yeah, virtual participations. And can we? Where can we find the information on this? Um, in this uh, international conference, is it out already? Uh, okay, for this one, uh, we need to get the buy-in from the ESCO. Uh, we already book the time for our ESCO. Uh, once he got the buy-in, then we publish. Because uh, once we publish, we need to uh, to have all the uh, the big boys ready, uh, big names. Then only we ha can have the participations. Okay, so uh, okay, good. So look, looking forward to this um, spectacular event coming up soon this year. Uh, any last word you want to give to for our audience at the forum right now um, before we conclude this interview? 
Um, I don't like to say the last word lah. It okay. looks like I'm going after this. <laughs> I, you won't see me forever, though. <laughs> uh, well, any wishes? <laughs> Selamat Hari Raya Maaf Zalmatin Amin dah berhati-hati Di jalan raya uh, Ingatlah orang yang disayang Dan orang yang menyayangi anda Okay, okay. Alright so um, for the audience If you want to know more about Dr. Nazri please google him I, His portfolio is Um, a lot there to explain, you know, um, if you want to see his book, his um, activities or his training programs, you can just Google him. Um, thank you, Dr. Nazri. And thank you so much, audience, for staying with us. Um, if anyone would like to know more about CLT Malaysia, please visit our website at www.cilt.org.my. So thank you. Bye right, now. Thank you all. Bye. Cheers.